Hey guys, welcome to Alza Dolls Legacy, the new dungeon in patch 6.1. So today we're going to be covering all of the boss mechanics and helping you guys clear this just a little bit quicker. All right guys, first boss here, pump up the jam, octopus man, you know what I'm saying? Let's get in there, let's see what he's got for us. Big wave right here. Now you want to mitigate this a little bit if you can. It's pretty much a, a big AoE, but it also puts a bleed up on the party. So healers really got to push some healing right there. If you can, you know, help your healers out as a tank with like reprisal or something, highly recommend it. This dig right here, you see his tentacle going underwater. Basically, wherever that ends up, it's going to sort of eat up that part of the room. So see it, it appeared over there, big circle. Now, occasionally he can use both tentacles in this. So just be aware of that and... Uh, Try to get safe. Here we go. Tentacle dig. This one does have both right here. So you see those things twirling around right there in the water. You can walk over these as they're going. Not a huge deal there. But uh, basically just whenever that you see them slowing down and stopping, you just don't really want to be underneath them or anywhere near them now if you are gonna get hit by one i would suggest getting hit by only one not like the overlapping section toxic fountain right here this is essentially poison ink he's going to blow up the uh, circles on around the room in the order that he spawned them in so there will be a first set second set and third set so you basically just want to wait for one of the earlier ones to blow up and then move into that safe location and you're pretty much good to go and that's that's actually really all this guy has is those three abilities so if you do get hit by one of those poison things not a big deal i mean it does put a poison dot on you which kind of sucks but it it i think it's dispellable there we go another big wave that was a our aoe with the bleed on it doing another tentacle dig here with both tentacles so we're going to watch where these sort of twirl around the room And there we go. Boom, safe. Overall, pretty simple. I mean, basically just has three little mechanics there. Nothing overly complicated. Just make sure that you are aware of where things are in the room, essentially. And you're, you're pretty much good to go on this boss. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Second boss of this particular dungeon is the Armored Chariot. Now you will notice on his sides there he does have shields and he will be using them throughout the fight for a couple mechanics. So let's take a look here and uh, <clears throat> see what he's got in store for us. Articulated Bitch. You noticed he did do a circle around him there. You don't really want to be in that. And he has summoned... Some little Magitech claws over here. They're, they do have one and two symbols above their heads. And he's now using his shields to reflect. So essentially the, the first beams will then go off. You see they channeled for a little bit. And now he rotated. And the ones with the number two above their head are going off. So he's using that shield to reflect. Essentially making that area of bad a little bit bigger. If you do get hit by this, it does cause a lightning dot on you. Just be aware of that. That Diffusion Ray right there, unavoidable damage, big AoE. Uh, healers just sort of top up. Tanks, if you feel like it, help them out. Throw a raid cooldown there. Now, unlike the first one, this one in particular has multiple, and they will go off at the same time. And there is a safe point in the room. There's actually, uh, I think, two of them. So you will want to try to find that based on the pathing of the projectiles there. And like I said, every time he does this cast, he does do a small circle within his hitbox, so you really do not want to be in that. So here we go, we're looking for the number two on this one. Gonna get it right here, wait for all those to go off. This time though, we do get spread markers above our head, so we are going to have to rotate around, avoiding that one, and take those AoE explosions. Luckily, this one leaves you with more in the room than the uh, other mechanic does, where all of them go off at the exact same time. So let's take a look at this one more time. So we have, essentially, 
the giant ones. And basically, it's almost uh, a path, it seems like, next to the the two that are going off. So, like, the two hands right there, we stood next to them, and our partner stood over there on the other side of the room next to those. So if you are having trouble finding that, that might be a useful tip for you there. But all in all, pretty simple. We missed that tank buster there, but it um, doesn't hit too hard, honestly. Just um, throw like at least a 20% on that, and you should be good as a tank. And now we have arrived at the final boss of the dungeon. Cap, Capicola, Cap, Captain Kulu, Cap, Cap Kulu. Sure, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, seems to be a joker, honestly, and uh, I'm sure he's got some little tricks in store for us here. So, as my players finish up their cutscenes and run up here, uh, we're going to get started on this boss. Now, you will notice there are some spikes on the floor here, or some little hold platforms. And as you see around the edges of the room there, he did put up some spikes, which leads us to believe that these ones in the middle here will also have spikes at some point. So this mechanic here, spin out, he's going to essentially pull everyone right in front of him, and now you have a arrow marker that you need to control with your mouse or your joystick or arrows or whatever, and try to dodge all of these spikes. If you do get hit by this spike, you do take uh, some bleed damage there. Overall, it was a little disorienting on my first uh, attempt through that, but overall, I've, I've sort of somewhat learned to adjust. And if you do get hit by spikes, it is not a tremendous amount of damage, so that that's good news. Now, this other major ability that he has called Wild Weave, he's going to throw out all of these sort of tapestries here, these cloths, and he channels on one. So he's channeling on green. You essentially do not want to be near any of the green ones and see all of our parties spread out here, and they are safe. Now, over in that area circumstance, there was a green that was right here in this location and a yellow that was fairly close to it. So in that circumstance, you really still don't want to be like on that particular color but as long as you are at one that is far away usually the middle ones seem to be pretty good honestly every time I've noticed here we got another spin out so he's gonna pull us up to the middle once again and this one's actually gonna move a little bit faster try to sort of spin your way around he does a beam down the middle to make it a little bit more hectic oh yeah let me go ahead and Take some nice spikes and a Vuln, yes! Oh, yes! Doing fantastic right here, guys. As you can see, everyone in our party is sort of getting hit a little bit, but as we end that phase right here, our healer should be able to pick us back up, hopefully, and uh, we can commence fight. Now, if a tank, you are a tank right here, do be aware that there is this nice little tank buster that happens right after all that. So if you did eat a ton of spikes, you really want to throw something extra to be sure to uh, survive. But overall, um, that's pretty much this boss. I mean, all the dun dungeon bosses here seem to be more or less two major mechanics to pay attention to. And not overly complicated, but... Um, yeah, they were pretty fun, honestly. I actually enjoyed this dungeon a lot. So, see you next time, guys.